Okay, so... I'm rolling. Hi. Now, I'm here at the TV studio at Seattle Community Media. And my name is Janet Christensen O'Brien. And my TV show here at Seattle Community Media is Public Interest Issue Show. Now, this is our studio. And what I want to talk to you today is, this is a new and exciting thing. Um, my show today isn't, isn't on some kind of fun topic. It's on a serious topic. And I would like the Attorney General of the State of Florida, and uh, her name is Ashley Moody. She was just elected in January 2019. She's just newly in her post, and she's doing a good job already. And I would like her to pay some attention and in help the investigation look into uh, Fran Grady Jehuli's son, Brad, uh, has been, he's either dead or he's missing. Uh, he died a few years ago, and we can't seem to find out where he's buried. And David Comadero, who is a Seminole County police officer, he's a sheriff over there, and he worked a lot, and he's semi-retired, maybe retired. Uh, some of the websites for Seminole County show that he is a, a retired sheriff. Some of the websites show that he's working on cold cases. And uh, we would like to know from him, uh, David Comadero, where Brad is buried, where Brad is, if he's been cremated, uh, we just want to know what's going on with him. Now, this is the studio, and I really appreciate the fact that Seattle Community Media gives us, as TV producers, the opportunity to use this fine studio here and to get our issues across. Now, I would like to pull up for you um, This is, this is what we get. We get uh, editing, we get uh, all sorts of media content so we can put them on our show, and, and we get virtually everything. And today, with uh, Fran Grady Jehuli, and uh, Brad's last name is R-U-T-K-O-S-K-Y. Brad is a youngster and he's been missing. Uh, we think he's dead. Uh, we think he died a few years ago. And um, the problem is, is that we've never been able to confirm when Brad died and where he is. Did he go to a mortuary? Did he get cremated? Did he go to a mortuary? And did he get buried? Uh, we just don't know what happened to Brad. And um, there's a breaking story where uh, an attorney uh, had six files of cremated uh, materials in her office and now it seems to be nine vials of cremated material and uh, David Comadero worked with her on a capacity and we would like to know if Brad's remains are amongst the remains that were seized by the Orange County Sheriff's Department and we would like to know if Brad's remains are in that stuff. Now uh, let me pull up um, Fran, Fran, Brady, um, there she is, Fran, Brad Grady Jehuli. Brad Grady Jehuli. There she is, Brad, uh, Fran Grady Jehuli. Uh, she just called up and she said that um, they had this situation. And I would like to uh, play a little of the voicemail to you. She called up yesterday and she was talking to me about the voicemail for the criminal case. 
And um, I'm sorry that the internet is a little slow here at the TV station, but that's because I'm kind of slow. Audio is not on. There's okay, no okay, so there's no audio on my computer. So that's okay, we won't listen to that. But I want you to see these different stories right here. The attorney's name is Rebecca F-E-R F-R-E-R-L-O. She was arrested two days ago and Adam is the one that did the story on it. And so I talked to Adam today. I talked to Adam today. He's with ABC in Orlando. And Adam said that he's going to try to get the death certificate for Brad and that he's going to try to find out uh, if Brad was cremated and if Brad's remains are amongst the remains of the attorney's office that was confiscated. The, the remains, those six or seven vials of cremated remains. Now the, the reporter, he's with ABC Orlando and he's a really remarkable reporter. Uh, his name is Adam and his last name is spelled W-A-L-S-E-R. He's a wonderful reporter. I talked to him today and I told him that um, Fran Grady Johuli has been trying to find out where her son Brad is for a few years and I've been doing stories on it for five years and they've been broadcast over here at Seattle Community Media. We flew down to Florida, we filmed the interviews and then we edited it up here in the TV station in Seattle at Seattle Community Media and we've put numbers of these stories on the air. They're on Seattle Community Media and they're on archive.org. Fran Grady Jahuli wants to know where her son Brad is. And right now what's happening is, as you can see on the monitor here, what's happening is um, the Attorney General is involved in trying to find out who those remains are and these are some of the stories that we've done here at Seattle Community Media. And as I scale down, you can see that these stories are very, very interesting and they're on the air. This one right here is the one where uh, we want to find out what's going on. And uh, see right here is all this stuff. And I'm a reporter. I, that's, see that right there is when I had the voicemails. This is Fran talking to me on the train. That's when I first met her. And, and so what I want to know is what's going to happen. This is the reporter right here with ABC Orlando. This is the new attorney. This is the new Florida attorney general. And up here in Seattle, we are doing this story because it's breaking news up here in Seattle. And we are doing this story because we want to help Fran Grady Juhuli also find Brad. You know, we are a public access channel. Seattle Community Media up here in Seattle, we're public access and we care about you. We care about the stories that are of interest to you and we care about all these public interest issues. And so I appreciate you paying attention to my show. I'm Janet Christensen O'Brien and my show is here. This is the studio. My show is here on Seattle Community Media and my show is Public Interest Issue Show. And we are here to get the word out to the public. We are gonna watch this story. We're gonna find out what's happening. We're gonna find Brad. And we're gonna find Brad and we're gonna let you know on Seattle Community Media TV. We're here, we're here to, to look into these things. And uh, Fran, she is wanting to know what happened to her son. That's one of the court orders that uh, told her not to make derogatory comments about David Comadero. When I was in the Noriega trial in 1991, uh, judge, the judge in that case, Judge Hollander, he said to the defense not to make any derogatory comments about the prosecution. So it even happened at the Manuel Noriega trial in 91. Now, I'm also a private eye, as well as a filmmaker and a TV producer. 
But when I was at the Noriega trial, I was there as Janet Christensen O'Brien, a private eye with Seattle Detective Bureau. And when I was there, we got transcripts of the hearing that was at sidebar on the Noriega trial. And on that Noriega trial, the judge told the defense lawyers in that case not to make any derogatory comments about the prosecution or he would put all of the defense attorneys in contempt of court. And that's the kind of thing that happened to Fran Grady Jahuli. She couldn't make derogatory comments about David Comadero. Now, I know things like that happen in Florida because that kind of thing happened on the Noriega trial. And in that case, that case was fascinating because several of the defense attorneys in that case got into motorcycle accidents or got into car accidents. And one of them even got killed. Uh, and uh, uh, Robert Romano, who was a defense attorney in that case, uh, got in a, car, a motorcycle accident right before the end of the trial. And so, you know, these kind of things that are like the Old West happen. And uh, that's why this case is so remarkably important. And the Palm Beach Post in this case, see, the Palm Beach Post, let me uh, get you back to uh, the Fran Grady Jahuli things. And uh, let me show you the Palm Beach Post. The Palm Beach Post did all sorts of wonderful stories for the last two years. And, and see, this is when Fran was up here in Seattle. She was at this TV station. Uh, let me move this a little forward to where Fran is. Fran was in the TV station here in Seattle and she did her story on Finding Brad. And the public interest issue show has been monitoring this case for the last few years. And we are happy to be of service and do public interest shows. And so I want to say thank you very much for paying attention to my show. Thank you very much for caring about Brad. Thank you very much, Adam uh, Wesley, W-A-L-S-E-R of the ABC Orlando for caring about this. And thank you for the Florida Attorney General and her name is Ashley Moody. Ashley Moody, she just got elected in January. She's doing a nice job of trying to find out what's going on in Florida with the court, with the judges, with all sorts of things that are happening down there. It's, it's, it's a very serious thing. Uh, you know, it's very serious when you're in contempt of court if you make derogatory comments about the opposing side who is the prosecutor's side. And I'm Janet Christensen O'Brien, and I'm signing off here, but it was very significant on the Noriega trial when the judge told the defense that they could not make any derogatory comments, and that's a part of the record. It's in a sidebar hearing that happened in September or October, and we found out about it in February. And then all the press corps were given a copy of the transcript of that hearing that occurred in sidebar. And that was just very significant. So thank you very much. We're public interest issues and we're all over and we're here in Seattle on TV, here in the studio right now to bring this breaking story to you. And uh, we're really happy to be here. We're really happy that uh, Adam at ABC Orlando is gonna look into this too because I'm glad that the media in Florida is interested in this story. And the media in Florida helped, the West Palm Beach Post helped Glenda Martinez Smith. She was on appeal when the film that we did on uh, Eyes on Guardian Predators was released. And Glenda Martinez Smith, her husband was, their marriage was annulled. And Glenda Martinez Smith, had to appeal that decision and she won in the Court of Appeals. And so Glenda Martinez Smith got her husband back and the Guardian was out. The Guardian was kicked off the case and Glenda had, had the chance to live a happy life with her husband, Adam Smith. And so the thing is, this is becoming a public 
uh, media interest down there in Florida now. Uh, the West Palm Beach Post is doing a wonderful story about the corruption. The Broward County judge whose wife had all these guardianships and there was a conflict of interest. That broke in the West Palm Beach Post. And um, this story, I'm hoping, is going to break in the ABC Orlando. I'm just hoping they're going to investigate and do a better story than I'm doing. You know, they're the real media. I'm just public access TV. And I'm just helping. When you call me and you have a story, I'm trying to put it on the air for you. And I wanted to officially thank Ashley Moody, the Florida Attorney General for caring, for caring about corruption in the courts, for caring about corruption with police, and for caring that uh, we, we are out here, we are the media, and we wanna know. So this is Janet Christensen O'Brien. I'm here at the TV station, and we care about Frank Grady Jahuli finding out what happened to her son, Brad. We care about finding out who are the victims in those cremated vials that um, ABC News just broke the story about. So thank you very much. Uh, you know, it takes us all, it takes us all to put these stories on the air. If it wasn't for the people out there, for you, uh, we wouldn't have this kind of information. And my next story is going to be about uh, street walkers and women of the night and uh, the fact that in South King County, we have a series of murders that are going on, just like the Green River case that happened in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And uh, I want to bring that picture of the guy who was uh, identified in the Green River. And I wanna bring another picture of another guy that looks very like him. And that guy is not David Ridgway. And so did Reichert really convict the Green River killer? Or was that just so that all of those Green River killings could be wrapped up in a nice little bow so that Reichert could run for office? Do you believe that the Green River Killer was really Ridgeway? Or do you believe that there is another section of those murders, like maybe 73 of those murders, Ridgeway did about 30 of them, and the guy in the composite sketch and the picture we have of the real person, are those the other segment to the Green River Killer? So that's our next show. We're gonna investigate the murders that are happening in South King County, and we're gonna investigate the fact that these murders are continuing, and it seems to be that there is another serial killer in South King County who is right now actively killing women in South King County. And if you're a victim, or if you're maybe a witness, and you want to come forward, that is going to be our next story. And we're going to also do more stories about whether Ridgeway was the King County killer and whether there is another guy out there who looks really a lot like that poster. And he had a pickup and he had a business that was in the lumber industry out there. He lived in Idaho. He lived in South King County. He now lives uh, north of Seattle, north, north, north. And could he be uh, one of those uh, people that is exact replica of that poster? So we are investigating these serial murders that are happening now in South King County. And so if you have information on that, we're doing that story next. Right now we're doing Fran Grady Jahuli, and we're doing the fact that in the Noriega trial, the defense attorneys, John May and Frank Rubino, who represented nine months of the Noriega trial in Miami Federal Courthouse, that Frank May and uh, John and Frank, John May and Frank Rubino were threatened at sidebar that if they made any derogatory comments about the prosecution prosecutors, 
they would be in contempt of court and they would be thrown in jail. How can you represent anybody when, if you make a derogatory comment, you're immediately thrown in jail. So we're looking at police misconduct, attorney misconduct, judicial misconduct, and we're looking at the serial murders that are happening in South King County. So I'm sorry to ramble on so much, but this is the Public Interest Issue Show. I'm Janet Christensen O'Brien. I'm a TV producer and a host over here at Seattle Community Media. It's very important that we get funding over here because we need to do important stories like this. It's very important that SCC gets funding because they are the reason we are operating. We need to give them more funding so that Seattle Community Media and SCC has enough money to get better equipment, better cameras, better computers, pay the people over at SCC more money because they are helping us stay on the air. So thank you very much. I hope the Seattle Mirror is listening to this too, because we need, and the Seattle City Council, we need more money over here to put these shows on the air. Because over here at Seattle Community Media, over here at SCC, we care about the public. Thank you. This is Janet Christensen O'Brien. We care about you. Thanks. And see, these are the shows we care about having. This is when David Comadero threatened Fran Grady Jahula on a voicemail that she was going to go to hell. That's very significant because he was threatening to kill her on a voicemail. And we had that voicemail transcribed. And see, this is the voicemail right here. This is the court reporter. This is uh, Sergeant Comadero's voicemail. And this is where he's telling her that, uh, you know, you're going to heaven. You know, directly to hell. That was a voicemail that was transcribed. So we need, we need funding over here at Seattle Community Media so we can put shows like this on the air. And so that SCC can do their job too. They help us. You know, they're right now holding the camera so I can talk to you. Everything is a community activity. We're all working together to talk to you. Thank you. Now I'm going to go back to doing my show. Thanks a lot. I'm talking to you.